welcome to Always Open. On today's show, we're going to be talking about what the one thing you take for granted in life is and two questions from our box of issues. On today's show, you got me, Barbara Dunkelman, along with... Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm this guy, <laughs> Bethany. I got, I, uh, I, uh, I'm the uh, guy who got tricked. Yeah, you did. <laughs> What's up? It's me. And here the one who go. I'm back. Did not get tricked. I did not get tricked, but I'm here. I got, I tricked Meryl into co-hosting the show with me. Sometimes. Yeah, aren't you on it every time? Uh, pretty much almost every time. Unless she's out of town. The first, it's kind of progressed. The first season was like 80 percent of the episodes. The second season was like. 88%. This one's probably like 95. They're just Hi. not as good when you're not on. And do you uh, enjoy being on the show? Yeah, I love Barbara. You do? Yeah. That's not what I asked. I'll give you your That's time. That's the feeling like being on the show. <laughs> yeah, I love doing it. It's, it's interesting. So happy interesting. to have you here, buddy. Interesting answer. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel like being on the show? I love Barbara. Why would you say that? <laughs> I say anything. She does it for me. I oh, wasn't this one of the stretch goals? The show. Yeah, it was. Yes. So um, thanks to uh, everyone who donated for Extra Life. We got Jeff on the show. Yeah. yeah. That was, I think, at 400? 400. That's 400. how much you're worth. That's and we raised that in, like, we raised, I think, when you announced it, we had, like, 8,000 left or so. Yeah. We yeah, got we did it good. within, like, 15 minutes. It was People wanted crazy. to see you on the show. Y'all are talking about uh, Extra Life? Yes. yes. Yeah. My favorite part, you guys weren't here at the beginning, my favorite part about Extra Life is when we got to, like, $600,000 in the first hour, and oh, then we yeah. went, oh, <laughs> shit. No, oh, that was yeah. none of that. None of that I, money is real. I was watching yep. the show. That was super that demoralizing. Yeah. And it was, yeah. I think there was just like some sort of like tech issue. Yeah. A lot of like oh. handing phones back and forth going like. Yeah. Well, oh. I went up on the site to donate and it was way lower than the number <laughs> yeah. on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, maybe they're taking a number yeah. from somewhere else that well, I don't know. We, oh, were, we were at LAX and yeah. I remember there was a few of us because we'd gone to this event and I looked at my phone and I was like, holy fuck, you guys. Like they're going to, they're going to get there. We, yeah. And then it was like, oh, just kidding. When you, when you say you went to an event, were you at the ladies in business event? We were. We How did were. that go? It was, it was good. Great. Was yeah. it good? Yeah. yeah it was With like Sarah Harden and yeah. the whole thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Did she ask about me? No, she didn't. I never did. Never <laughs> did. A lot of times. <laughs> yeah. I think she asked about you like years ago, but she's over you. Yeah. <laughs> Just get back in there, Jeff. Just go to the ladies event next time. Put a wig on. Gotta get an invite. In your, uh, you have to little... get rid of that beard though. I don't think so. Nah, please don't. <laughs> You're very inclusive there. <laughs> well, let's do our shot. Oh, yeah. We're, we're each going to do two and uh, because Jeff wants to watch us do two shots each. <laughs> Are we going to do it back to back or are you going to wait? Just saying. We'll I don't want to watch you do two well, shots. Well, Jeff recommended he do body shots off of us and we were like, Jeff, that's inappropriate. That's 100% the opposite of what Jeff wanted <laughs> to do. <laughs> well, this is the uh, the camel toe shot and it's one part Jägermeister and one part Malibu, which this is not sounds, it, it sounds really gross. Well, that's the thing uh, is that sometimes, most of the time we take nice and tasty shots, but people, like most of the shots that we get are pretty sadistic. Yeah. They're like, Tabasco and like urine. It doesn't sound Make good. It. I remember that shot very well. <laughs> yeah, it was not pleasant. <laughs> uh, so this one's submitted by Noah M. So shout out to you, Noah M. He's a. Cheers. He's actually Cheers. Noah J's older brother. Oh. <laughs> oh, that wasn't bad. Oh, it almost tastes like. Oh, cough syrup. No, the Jaeger's bad. <laughs> it's a little cough syrupy, but I guess that's the Jaeger. And there's oh. like a sweet hint to it. Yeah. That's not bad. I can do a second. All right. Well, you don't have a choice. You have to. <laughs> this is, you're going to be able to he's like taste the shot on my ad read. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just spilled half of it on me. That was a mistake. That was absolutely a mistake. Mm. Yeah. That one wasn't bad. Ugh. But now my Band-Aids are all soaked. Oh. Your Band-Aids? She has little Band-Aids band on her fingers. I like when I when I stress and like when I'm super anxious, I like gnaw on my fingers. So I'm trying to break that habit. Okay. It's like instead of gnawing on my fingernails, <laughs> I gnaw on my fingers. Yeah, it's real bad. Why are you, what are you so stressed about that you're eating yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know, masturbating. Life. I don't think it's like that. Well, I was gonna make I don't a, get any pleasure. I was gonna from make it. like an eating yourself. <laughs> so oh, let's just breeze past that. If I could do, do you... that, I don't think I would. If you, I mean, I guess it's just at like you know. What if you could eat yourself out? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I don't think I would do that. I don't think I would either, dude. And I'm fucked up. <laughs> Penises. You guys don't have them. I see. Well, I mean, maybe you have some. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of anything I would want less in my in me than me. Yeah. <laughs> that's a really good way of putting it. I right, know we've exactly been, we've where been I've been. Struggling to get some always open merchandise. I think yeah. that's uh, a quote right yeah. there. Ugh. We've been it. in some good places. I would. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> All right. We're, we're gonna start off. We're gonna start off the show with a game called Most Likely to. So we we played this on a couple episodes already, but just to explain for you guys and okay. anybody watching who hasn't seen it before. Uh, we're going to bring up some prompts on screen, and it's going to be things like, who's most likely to do blank? And then we all have to vote on who we think the person most likely to do that thing is. Does the person that is voted the most get a prize at the end? You get Just another shot. shame. You get another camel toe shot. Just endless shame. 
I feel like it's going to be me. All right, we ready with our, our prints? Oh, there you go. Who is most likely to sew their own clothes? Okay. Sew their own clothes? Okay. Like repair? It's just like make alterations. I don't know. Um, okay. Okay, we ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. We all went with Do I have to play too? <laughs> yeah, you have to play. <laughs> <laughs> so we all voted for uh, someone, someone, else. someone different. Else. I think it's because none of us would do this. Mm -mm. Um, well, I figured like I figured you would. You would mo mostly because I can see you doing any. Uh, out of, if like cosplay were a thing, like yeah. I would. I mean, it is a it's thing. A thing. <laughs> <laughs> if it were to <laughs> exist, <It's existing>. um, <laughs> if any of us were to do that, I figured you'd be the one to do it. I think you'd be the. You'd hire people to do it for you. I see. I figured it would be you you're right. because I, I feel you're... like your homebody. And I don't so mean this in a negative way. I would have like a too, sewing kit, like in every room. To sew yourself. I am too fancy to sew yeah. myself. I've tried to, uh, I don't even want to call it. Sew? I haven't even sewed. I've made my own costumes before, but it's all been with either a uh, super glue, uh, a glue gun, staples, or tape. I love glue I've guns. I've never whipped out any type of sewing machine or anything like that. Well, it's hard to sew through dildos, right? It very. Yeah. yeah. The thick plastic makes it difficult to really do anything with it. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I should have voted Jeff, though, because you're you're pretty crafty. Well, and I grew up poor and uh, also in the punk, so we sewed our own patches. Well, also, we don't think about the fact that you have Millie. Things. And I have a kid. We should have voted Jeff. Yeah. yeah. I know, I but. Back. Yeah. I I, and I answer. like to sew. Jeff you I don't. Do. I do. Oh, I, enjoy, do. I enjoy the sewing. Do you yes. still ever oh, sew anything Jeff. off your clothes? Or anything no, like that? Not even in a while, you but it doesn't sweetheart. mean I wouldn't. You little sweetheart. You little sweetheart angel. I sew. Millie has a, uh, my daughter, uh, she has uh, <laughs> a, there's a thing that's really popular right now, the, the jean jackets with patches on them. Yeah. So Millie collects oh, patches, one. and so I sew her patches on sometimes. Oh, Whenever sweet. her mom is like, doing whatever the fuck she does. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Sew, I'll sew a patch. On yeah, occasion. That's good to know. I want yeah. I, I, to. I need a like. Well, I want to get a bigger. I want like an oversized one because this one's like a fitted one. Yeah, but patches I want are nice. better on the oversized one. If I pay you, would you sew some stuff on uh -huh. clothes? Okay, if I cool. didn't pay you, would you do it for me? I uh -huh. know. Like, oh, I'm not fuck. gonna pay you, but <laughs> I'm I'm now you. I'll do free pay. I'm booked. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare! All right, let's bring up our next question. Who's most likely to be on Broadway? Oh fuck. When are we? When are we revealing? Okay. Uh, shit. All right. Go. Three, two, <laughs> one, go. Oh, Ooh, we both, both voted Meryl. You guys voted Jeff. I voted Jeff because of the musical. What oh, musical? I'm allowed to talk about that, right? Because it was the stretch. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm tone deaf. So, like, so I don't know anything about music. I know, but I think it's going to happen because I've got lots of ideas. In, in, Yes, yeah. I got lots of events ideas. There you go. Around you bud. Thank you. Good performance. I said Muriel because Muriel because I know the least about her and there you go. <laughs> I, I assume you probably are, are uh, can sing. Oh, I cannot. No, no. I was in choir, but just she, because we went on fun trips. I voted you because I, I've seen that video of you when you were younger performing to NSYNC. Oh, oh yes. That a, little gem. Good that, dancer. That good. That good thing. But the I, thing is, like, I don't think any of us sing. Uh, yeah. So that's. I mean, what I, was I like to. Sing, you can carry it, but too. I'm not good. Nah, I uh, I went with Jeff because I feel like there's nothing you can't do, Jeff. Thank you oh, very much, man. Oh God! I feel like a book is keep next, a... and then Broadway. What's happening over here? I can't keep a straight <laughs> face when shit's happening off screen. That's for sure. <laughs> the fuck is going they got the, some of the sugar pine boys in town. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's next? Let's do our next okay. question. Who's most likely to be first to die in a zombie apocalypse? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This. Fuck. Three. Two, one. Everyone was gonna choose me! I knew it as soon as I read it. Fuck you guys, it's true. It's yeah. so true, it's yeah, so you're... true. I feel like you... Fight or flight, and I would die. Well, yeah. you're a mixture of uh, incapable, and also uh, the, the, the one thing you do know how to do is tell other people to do your job for you. And I think that that goes out the window really quickly when it's a life or death situation. You're gonna make me cry, I'm gonna laugh so hard. Yeah. Like, Clarissa I... and Patrick are gonna be like, no. Fuck off. I just feel like you would think it'd be sexy to die, so you'd like <laughs> rather die than Well, that is true. Life. I love, well, I think I'd enjoy murdering someone else more than being murdered. See, I go two ways with this. Okay, One, I agree with Jeff on everything he's taking, but also, <laughs> you're a nice, per you're a kind-hearted person. You'd Thank probably, you. you'd probably, uh, 
you know, risk your own life to save others. I probably would. It depends on who was around. Would you? I'm just trying to suck up to her. Okay, I was going to say, she says the meanest things about people. About you, <laughs> to you. To me, about other people. Yeah, who? Barbara, I'm so sure. <laughs> yeah, lots of bad things about me. No, I knew as soon as the question came up, it would be me. Of course. Yeah, you just don't have any survival skills. Some of them are just <laughs> obvious. All right, let's do another one. Who's most likely to say, that's what she said? Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, two, two three. three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, obviously. No. We know each other pretty well. That's Everyone cool. voted for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's true because I, uh, my sense of humor is either that of a dad or that of a 17-year-old boy. Michael right. Scott. That's okay. Or just anything, anything Michael Scott has ever said. Yeah. Mm. I'm okay with that. All right. One more. Who's most likely to go into public in their pajamas? Ooh. <laughs> this one's difficult. Uh, All right. Okay. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Mmm. It would not be me. Are you I, joking? I have a good reason for it. <laughs> uh, Here, look, I, I feel like you're close to giving up. <laughs> I think that you're 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 whole you're you're still working it right now, but I think that like another six months of whatever this you've got going on, uh, it's you're gonna it's just gonna be you in a bottle. Of, not even a bottle. It's gonna be you walking around in your pajamas in a Walmart with a jug of wine. But we didn't talk about like gaining weight and wearing a moo moo. So <laughs> fuck we can you. Some of that in. I mean, you realize I'm your only friend. That's not oh. true. In the office. That's not true. That's what you've said. I don't disagree. You and I are becoming friends. He said, right? he said I don't disagree. Jeff he, has said, in, I'm <laughs> quoting word for word, Barbara, you are my best friend at this office. I don't know what I would ever do without you. I'm so happy we get to spend time. He also said that to me. He also said that to me. He would <laughs> never say that. <laughs> said that to anybody. Well, to me, you have said I'm your only friend. Uh, I, well, yeah. I mean, and with good reason. I, okay, I don't well, do a good job of maintaining friendships. I am 32. And you can I'm see why I drive the way. See, There's nothing else to live for. I didn't say you're like, you just, I think you're just gonna quit trying. Cause you're gonna be like, what's the point? You'll get 18 cats. Ew, I hate cats. Some, you know I hate cats. You'll get pajamas. That will never happen. You'll I get, voted Meryl. You'll get pictures of cats. Why? I voted Meryl cause you are the closest, you've I voted been you in as well. college the most recent. And I feel it's oh, a very I didn't college even think about that. I was just, I just think of like the terrible people in my hometown who like exclusively go to Walmart in only their pajamas and Ooh. I would never do that. Do people I, in your town go to Walmart to hang out? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. How do you hang I used out there? What it's like a social there's scene. There's nothing else to do. But yeah. you just hang out and walk where around. Is your shitty, where is a shitty place are you Plain from? Plainview, Texas. Okay, yeah, I'm from Alabama, it's very similar. Yep. Uh, yeah, Walmart, okay. Walmart's like a destination. Yeah. Yeah. My, my friends and, and I, we place. would make our parents drop us off at the movie theater and then we would sneak off to Walmart because oh, that was better than going to the movie awful. theater. That does not sound fun at all. It wasn't. That's why the pregnancy rate's so high. I like, I had to go to Walmart <laughs> for something recently and I dreaded every second of it's it. It's a desolate place. I can't imagine going there for fun. It's where dreams go to die. You guys well, are really alienating the Walmart crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, here's the thing, I love Walmart because that's like the only thing I grew up, we didn't have anything else. Like I didn't ex discover Target until like I came to Austin. Well, Target's yeah. for rich people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Target's exactly. Target. 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 yeah. So and so like it. when people hit on Walmart, I'm like, well fuck you because that's like all we had. I still think Chili's Ugh. is a fancy restaurant. No. <laughs> I, I felt Jeff Baby like back earlier. Yeah. On that two one. for twenty, you can get two entrees, two desserts. You know, but you shouldn't be able to do that. That's, there's a problem with that. The I'm more quality? of a TGI Fridays girl. Uh. <laughs> I just want to see this keep happening. Apple Visa. Mm. <laughs> Who's most likely to go to TGI Fridays? Well, now we know. It's yeah. Barbara and Mariel. <laughs> it's, Barbara. it's me. You Chili's and you TGI Fridays. I'll take you to Chili's. Do you, do you want to go someplace real? Yeah. Okay. What is your, what's your like one chain restaurant guilty pleasure? Do you have any? Yeah. Uh, I have two because I'm from Alabama. Uh, we have a place in Alabama called Crystal Burger. It's, oh, it's I know. just like uh, White Castle, but yeah. it's uh, the redneck version. Okay. They have the that in San Antonio too. Yeah, they do. And then uh, Waffle House. Mm. Mm. Grew That's raised good. on Waffle you gotta House. You got to go to Waffle House. House. That's definitely a lot. Those are yeah. my places. Everyone likes a good waffle. Um, so before we move on, I would like to thank Lyft for sponsoring this episode of Always Open. Lyft knows that their drivers are what keeps them moving, so they do everything they can to make sure their drivers are happy on every trip. It's a simple formula. Happy drivers mean happy passengers. Maybe that's why 9 out of 10 Lyft rides get a perfect 5-star rating. You could earn hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. Want to earn more money? Drive more. It's never been easier to give yourself a raise. Lyft was the first rideshare platform with tipping built right into the app. 
because getting tipped shouldn't depend on your passengers having a crumpled bill in their pocket. <laughs> you keep 100% of the tips and they add up fast. <laughs> Drivers have been paid over $200 million since the feature was first introduced, and Express Pay lets you get paid almost instantly instead of waiting for weeks. So join the ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. Go to lyft.com slash always open today and you can get a $500 new driver bonus. That's lyft.com slash always open, lyft.com slash always open, limited time only, terms apply. Thank you, know, you Lyft. You know what they say, don't be a Bethany, lift yourself out of your <laughs> miserable situation with your new job. Exactly, that should be their new slogan. Yeah. There I don't know go. why it's not. Lift yourself let's, up. Let's lift propose yourself that up. to them. Yeah, yeah. I, think they, I think they would accept it. It's a convincing <laughs> argument. All right, well, let's move on to our Ask Us Anything question. This one comes from Sophia L. And Sophia wants to know, what do you tend to take for granted? Mm. This is a really interesting question, especially since um, when this airs, it's going to be just after Thanksgiving, which a lot of people use to reflect on their life and, and talk about what they're thankful for and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why we picked this one, because I think a lot of us take things for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, what do you take? Do I have to go first? Yeah. Fuck. Obviously, friendships. No, I don't. I don't value <laughs> friendships very highly. Uh, uh, I, health. Yeah. yeah, I'd say I take my health for granted. I'm a, I'm a healthy. I don't ever get but sick. Still? <clears throat> yeah, dude. I, you, look like, at me. I look great. Well, what? what but you yeah, take I mean, it for granted in what way then? I just don't because appreciate healthy how healthy right I am all the time. Oh, uh, I see. Like, what you're and, yeah, I get health, sick very rarely. That or my career. You know, I take mm -hmm. for granted that I get to get up every day and like work in a playground. That you know, I'm the, I don't know, the the, the babysitter of, so I get to call the shots. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I think I think health is a big <clears throat> one, and I was thinking about this question earlier, and reading a lot of stories about people who are sick or who have to be in the hospital or are going through anything crazy like that. I think I take my health for granted as well. Of just like my body gets me up every day and functions, and I mm -hmm. rarely get sick. I rarely have health issues, and it's. Something that until something bad happens, you don't realize how good you have it until it could all just go down the drain like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And it's especially when you when we just did extra life. Yeah. And you, you like it's very easy to get caught up in the idea that you're doing good for a, a good cause in an abstract way. But if you think about uh, the reality of the lives of the people that money's going to and like what they're they're from wake up to go to bed every day and mm -hmm. what, what their life is like, it's like it's it's ridiculous how lucky we are to be. Healthy. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, I watched this video recently. We, a good friend of ours, Greg Miller, mm -hmm. a couple years ago, um, had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And I, I didn't even know about that until after it had already happened. But I watched this video that he put out where he talked about his whole experience with it and, and realizing he had it and, and going through treatment and everything. And it was just heartbreaking to hear the reality of it because he didn't yeah. sugarcoat anything, which I think a lot of people tend to do with illnesses. They don't want to make other people scared mm -hmm. or upset for them. Um, and watching that video, it's just, it was heartbreaking. And to hear anybody you love go through something like that. Especially somebody so happy-go-lucky and I positive. Know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which I like a lot of it's why he probably is like that now. He's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, the one thing cancer did for that guy, made him hot. It did. He looks way better post cancer. Yes, oh to cancer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Down with cancer. The, the next headline's gonna be like, "Always oh, open supports cancer." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think also my friendships, and yeah. and also where I work. I don't want to like echo everything you're saying, but we are all very fortunate to be here. And I, yeah. there are some days where it's hard, and we go through a lot of shit, and we're stressed out, and we're upset. But we have a fucking dream job Absolutely. being here and getting to do this and getting to do the show especially I think I take for granted sometimes because I don't realize the impact it has on so many people yeah. especially the messages we get mm -hmm. and the letters we receive about the show and it's like I'm so thankful for it but I think sometimes doing it it's like oh like I don't feel like recording this today yeah. or I'm tired or I don't feel well and it's like no this is important yeah. and I take that for granted I yeah. think a lot. What about you B? I think it's like a combination of what everyone said. I think more generally just life, you know, like realizing how good we have it career-wise, family-wise, close friendships, like things aren't that bad. And I think it's, it makes sense to let the negative creep in and to that, let that overwhelm you versus like thinking about all the positives that you have. And when we were at that event last Friday in LA. What, which event for? Um, it was called We Gather and it was for women in tech and media and entertainment. Um, it was hosted by our parent company, Full Screen, which a lot of you know that you know we were acquired a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so a couple of us were fortunate enough to go, and one of the things they said in, at the event that I found fascinating was that we have 60,000 thoughts per day. 
on Jesus average. Christ. Every every person, you might have been hungover at that point. Yeah, I was, gonna say, I don't remember, <laughs> but I was also violently hungover. But I'm also one of those people that's like on the edge of my seat, like little like goody two shoes, like at those events, because I just want to soak in all the knowledge. Yeah. So sixty thousand thoughts, and guess how, like what percentage are negative? <laughs> like most of them, I would assume. But like what? Ninety. I would say like seventy five percent. Twenty five percent. Between it was eighty percent, so forty eight thousand negative thoughts. Wow. And this guy that I'm like that I'm newly dating, when I mentioned that statistic to him, he was like, Yeah, but that means there's twelve thousand positive thoughts each day. And I was like, That was so nice. <laughs> like I would have never thought to twist it that way, like glass half full. <laughs> and it just made me start to like just gay. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah. It just made me start to realize, like, if you just think of it the other way and not just be so negative about days, and I, it's something I want to work on. That glass is not half full. It's it's 80% negative. You know what negative. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I just mean that, like, there's a lot of thoughts that happen. I think it's natural for the negative to creep in on all of us, like doubting what you do at work, doubting friendships, doubting different things. And, I mean, think about your day. There has to be something Jeff you is thought about negatively. Way. No, he's not. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Sometimes. No, he's not. What do I do? Oh, I agree that you're perfect in every way. Yeah. You're perfect. Oh, me? You're not. <laughs> well, like, I'm the only one that's going to be a real friend and tell you the truth. Thank yeah. you. I don't, it's, uh, no. We no, but you. like, that's, I, I see, I, 12,000 positive I, thoughts a day is kind of cool, too. Yeah. Uh, 12,000 positive thoughts, a lot of positive thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's too many. Buried under the weight of the negativity. Think the overwhelming, like, 60,000 is just like, I don't know if I believe schedule. that statistic. That's it's a lot of true. thoughts. My they brain said is usually it. like, they no, said it. you know when like a tumble passes through a town? women or men or everybody? They said general people. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Because I've been thinking about that a lot lately. I do that also. <laughs> do you think you're having more thoughts because of it? Yeah. I think we also do that with, um, like, with our careers and our positions, like on social media and in YouTube comments. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a negative, yes. I think a lot of us tend to focus on that, even though, like, for every one negative, there's like a hundred positive. Well, like I was telling you earlier, maybe not for like Jeff. some of the comments in the beginning when I had my blue hair. Bulletproof too. They were like, "That's like a prettier version of Ig Iggy Azalea, and she's trash or something." <laughs> <laughs> and someone's like. Why is that 40 Avril Lavigne lookalike sitting in the background? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, you oh, should, that sucks. You should do what we did for the season one Red vs. Blue DVD, the pull quote we pulled from it, where uh, you should just pull quote uh, like a prettier version of Iggy Azalea and just put that everywhere. Yeah, yeah. it should be <laughs> in your Twitter like, bio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just misquote yeah. the guy or lady. Yeah. <laughs> Use it as a positive. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it goes with the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think I. I my age and how young I actually am, because I'm like so focused on like retiring. You are 30. the oldest young person I know. It's so true. Meryl has five savings accounts, right? I bought a house. She has a house. She's how old are you? 25. Okay. It's impressive. How old were you when you bought your house? 25. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie is a two. Yeah, Carrie's one as a month. That's, it's very smart. I bought my first house at 23. Yeah. Did uh, you really? Mm -hmm. Damn. Oh, it's just like it's just the thing that like I worry like it's like the whole like cream cash rules everything around me and it really does so yeah. I worry about that so much and I'm just like focused on like how can I retire yeah. sooner and easier and I don't so then but then I'm like oh like maybe I should have gone out that night or like maybe I should have like had that drink but I then I'm like mm. you and I are very different in that sense I don't think about my future at all um, I'm, <laughs> oh, living, God. I'm living day to day and I that rent. just makes her nervous for you yeah, it well does. it's just like I I'm very much someone who lives in the now and yeah. I, I think about those things like when we were in Rome at that time I was trying to be very strict about like my diet so I was trying yeah. to eat like less cheese and be better You're about, about dude, carbs right? and all that yeah. Yeah. Italy. <laughs> but when in but Rome then, no, but then we went to Rome and I was like <laughs> fuck that shit and there's yeah. people I know in life who are just like no I'm gonna stay strict on my diet it's like when else are you gonna be in fucking Italy yeah, yeah. at these all these places getting to eat the best pasta in the yeah. world yeah. wine yeah. and cheese definitely and bread and that. Like, all that shit so oh, I, miss it. I think it's like I've always had that mentality of like living in the moment and knowing that like in 60 years from now am I gonna be thinking about like the diet I was on yeah. or the experience of just going crazy in Italy and yeah. Yeah. eating whatever and Here's want. the thing that I think about. It's like, you know, in 60 years from now, am I really going to be like, damn, I wish I would have had that one more drink, you know, that yeah. night. Like, so you can look at it. And so I, I'm trying to find the balance of like enjoying where I'm at in my life, but also trying to be fiscally responsible. Sure. <laughs> As someone who drank daily for 20 plus years, uh, I, I will say that the nice thing about me, it's nice to remember stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So. 
I don't know why I brought that up. Just <laughs> the no, it's true. That's is true. that some? Is that something you think you took for granted for? Oh yeah, before for sure. Well, it's yeah. life. Yeah, you're too drunk to remember anything. You pass out. It's uh, it's nice to be awake and lucid and sharp. Mm -hmm. and Do you mind if I ask you like what the turning point was? For me? Yeah, like what that moment was where you're just like, I need to stop doing this. Um, I've talked about it before on podcasts and stuff, but it was uh, without. I don't want to get gruesome, but uh, I was uh, I was I had gotten to a point where I was. I was drinking like uh, I had to take like five shots when I woke up. Mm -hmm. Wow! Just before to feel I normal. could come to work. Yeah, so that was just like I had a moment where I was in the kitchen at like six in the morning. And I had like my fifth shot of bullet, just good whiskey, and uh, and then I thought I don't feel so good, and I went to go to turn to the bathroom and I just projectile vomited across the kitchen. Holy fuck! And I thought, well, this is this would be this is probably not the way you want to live. So I stopped. Yeah, just so, cold uh, turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's probably the only way. I yeah. remember all when, that. You're in a yeah. situation like that, yeah. Um, and I'd say, you know, like, you start to think, like, my kid's 12, or she was 11 at the time, my kid's 11, like, she'll this, she'll remember this one. She was asleep, but, yeah. you know, like, if she walks in and daddy's cleaning up blood and puke or whatever, you know, like, yeah. she'll probably remember that. So, yeah. That's I'm really off. proud of you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks. I, no, it's okay. I, uh, you don't have to say that, but I appreciate it. I know I don't have to. Well, you already know how I feel, but mm -hmm. um, I was really proud of you when you did it then. And, oh, thanks. You know, it's kind of, you know, it's frustrating when you hear people like, oh, he's just saying that. It'll be two weeks. It'll be a month. And I'm like, no, he's really serious, and yeah. we should all support that. D I will say that's one. Of, that was one of the motivators is, uh, and I get it, uh, but I had z zero people believe me. I, I believed you. I thank you. I appreciate it. You'd be the one. <laughs> <laughs> I believed you. I didn't yeah. know about it until, like, way after the fact. Yeah. Though. I had a lot of, like, because, you know, we took, a, we took a break from our best friendship. Mm -hmm. right, uh, we didn't, right. You just stopped calling. <laughs> <laughs> Do I even have your number? Jeff didn't talk <laughs> on the phone. <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's, I think, one of the things, too, is, um, I guess, taking for granted the life you have and being kind of numb to it at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah, because, like, you, wait, you, you're, you, guys, you guys are young still. Well, two Not of you, me. two Not of you are young still. There you go. Um, <laughs> two of you are young, and one of you is about to give up. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I thought you were talking about me on that Fuck one. You, we're not best friends anymore. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, that it, 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 it is. Uh, it is youth is a fleeting thing, and yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. Live, living in the moment is, is an important thing. I think actually there's something to what you said there. Fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, enjoy it while you can because yeah. one day you'll be 42. I have noticed such a difference in you. Like it's pretty remarkable, in a good way. Oh, I just want to say that. Thanks. I don't think I've ever talked to you about it like in person, but like. Physically, obviously, huge. It's yeah, I, like I, I dropped a, a ton of weight. Night and day, but and just I don't like, look like a red. I don't look like a walking tomato anymore. Yeah. yeah, and also just like when you're around people, you just seem very present. I'm not as mean as I used to. You're be. You're not as mean. Yeah, I don't, I'm not scared of you as much as I was anymore. <laughs> I'm still a little scared of you though. <laughs> you love when people tell you that. <laughs> what do you What do you think when people say that to you? <laughs> that, uh, moving on. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, we have, we have two box of issues questions that we're going to do today. So we got Jeff here. So we can get some good yeah. advice from him. I hope people like that. We've started to use more of these because we get so we, many. We realized that it was like we had so many, and that people want to hear us talk about their situations. Yeah. So like, if you like that, let us know because we're trying something new. Yeah. And I haven't heard anyone complain about having two on every show yeah. or even some shows that we do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get uh, again the most questions we get are for the box of issues. So. All right, this one is from Amanda. And Amanda writes, I have a problem. My ex of three years and I broke up about a week and a half ago. Unfortunately, we still have to live together for three months until he can move out. However, I just found out that he slept with the girl I had been jealous of our entire relationship. I accused him of cheating on me with her and he told me I had nothing to worry about. I even found out once that she slept over while we were together and I was out of town. I also found out that her and her boyfriend broke up a few days ago. Now, this is not my proudest moment, but I went through his phone while he was in the shower and found out they had hooked up last night. I don't really know what to do about it. Looking at him makes me want to explode, and I have to live with him for another three more months. Help. Yikes. Yeah. That is not well, a good situation. That's a huge I've been, yikes. There. I've been there before. You've been there before. Yeah. He, he was definitely cheating on her. Absolutely. Uh, first of Absolutely. all. Absolutely. And uh, she doesn't have to live with him for three months. No, she no. doesn't. Kick him the fuck out. She, he needs to find another living situation. What she could do. Bottom line. Which what she could do uh, is sleep with that girl's ex boyfriend <laughs> real quick, and uh, that'll just make his mm. life difficult. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Or also, if he great, has a brother, great advice. Brother, his, his dad, advice. maybe his dad, <laughs> mom, sleep with her dad. 
Um, well, to, to start off, I don't think you're being crazy for thinking this. Mm -mm. No. Clearly, no. it all became true. Is like, a woman's intuition, I mean, sometimes it's. Or just intuition. Time. It, well, sure. Yeah, well, it's just like fire. dead on, you know? And it, I don't understand why they have to live together for three more months until he can move out. Until he can move out. Probably just like it's a probably a least, a a least situation. You know what? I bet he's got friends. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, the thing. Friends. Or go live with her, like the new person. Yeah. And also, sometimes it's like. If it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg to get him the fuck out somehow by breaking some type of lease, yeah, it's worth it. It will be only worth it. torment you. And let's let's say that the other girl situation didn't happen. Like you still don't want to live with the person that you're broken you've broken up with for three months. That in itself yeah. is not two weeks. That in itself is difficult. Uh, but also, he has no respect for her. No, yeah. and she That's shouldn't have to live with him for three months while not. he disrespects it's hostile. her. Like it's not a good environment no, for it's anyone. Not. Yeah. Yeah. But also to play devil's advocate, she said that he, she looked at his phone and found out they had hooked up the previous night after they already broke up. Yeah, but that, he, but that still, was not the first time they hooked up. She spent the I, night at the home they live in when she yeah. was out of town. And yeah. she's been jealous of that girl the whole time, and he knowingly let her spend the night while yeah. she was out of town and then never told her. Yeah, Even if nothing thing. happened, that's duplicitous. And also, yep, usually nice. if you're jealous of someone, it's for good reason. Yeah, yeah, there's something nice. going on that you notice that your right. intuition is probably picking up on. Yeah. But then there's also the argument of and I've heard this happening in relationships before where if someone's always jealous of someone for certain reasons, like, oh, I don't like you hanging out with this person, you kind of put the idea of that person in that person's brain. Sure. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you hanging out with this person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it could just be also that where it's like maybe they weren't hooking up or he didn't cheat on her, but because she always talked about her and was worried about her, it mm -hmm. became this idea in his head of like, now I'm thinking about this person in that way. Yeah. yeah. But also, yeah, she should, she just, is she, even if she, well, I don't want her to give up the place, right? Like, that should right, not be if, a thing. But, but I think if, if he won't, if, then, if he won't, then, then she, she needs to get to out of that on. situation. Well, it sounds like he's supposed to move out in yeah. two months. He's just taking advantage of her at this point. Yeah, Absolutely. Just stay in a friend's sofa. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're broken up. Like, I, I can't imagine a more nightmare situation than breaking up with someone and having to be around them all the time for three more months. It's bad. Maybe if it was like a week or two, yeah. deal with it. Yeah. But like, Three fucking months. It's so bad. You can make a lot of mistakes in three months. Too. She can do a lot of yeah. really like fun, passive aggressive stuff if he refuses to move <laughs> out. Like she could just start leaving dirty tampons on his stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. I, and he's like, it was on my pillow, and you're like, that's where I left it. <laughs> so I get the phone ring. I, I was gonna throw it away. I dropped it for a second to pick it up. You know how it is. Yeah. yeah. She could like I feel like a lot of problems could be solved. I thought like, like your shoes were trash. They were ugly. There's yeah. also like you're so vulnerable too that like. If they I mean, have a late night thing. Yeah, if yeah. it's like, you know, you, you're you at home drinking some wine and then he comes home and you're having this moment of vulnerability. Like yeah, he gets in a fight with the other girl, yeah. they support each other, like, no, no. Yeah, that's where it can mm -hmm. be really dangerous. Have you guys ever lived with an ex for a long period of time after yes. breaking up? <laughs> yeah? It's not oh, fun. I lived with an ex when I wanted to It was like a month. <laughs> a month? I think it was like a month. After breaking up. Yeah, you guys remember. Like, it was yeah. a month and it was awful and I just, I basically only went home to sleep. Yeah. yeah, and like I took over the bedroom, and so it was like that is my sacred space, and it was three weeks to a month, and it was awful. Damn, you know. And that's only. Fortunately, I was traveling a lot, so that's, I think that's the only reason I agreed to it. Um, but yeah, it wasn't fun. Yeah, it, yeah. I just I can't imagine being in that position. Um, yeah. And she wants our advice. I would say I agree. Mm -hmm. Find a way to get him the fuck out of that. He house. just yes. needs to leave, and if he won't, then she needs to. Yeah, yeah. You just need to get yourself out of that situation. And just know that clearly, if, if someone's willing to cheat on you and lie about it, or even just like, if you don't trust him for whatever reason, it was not a healthy situation. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's well, better that they're not. We're together. making the cheating assumption. <clears throat> yeah, we are. But yeah. if he, if she has has spent years being jealous of this woman, and he secretly let the girl stay over at his house, like. There's no need for that. Yeah, like he, he, it just shows a, a lack of respect on his part regardless. Absolutely. Yeah. That's probably not the called, kind of person you want to spend yeah. time with, especially in the detritus of a relationship. Well, it's just an inappropriate like behavior for a couple when someone's out of town to bring someone over that, you know. Absolutely. Of opposite sex because they're a straight couple, like to bring some girl over that she was already threatened by and there, there's no need for her to have been there, yeah. number one. And number two, if there is some crazy outlandish story as to why she was there, like she was it's like, called Lyft, take it home. Like, you don't need <laughs> yeah. to stay there. Lift yourself up. There you Lift, go. Like I have done, or up. like I might not do. DBAB, as we say, don't be a Bethany. Lift yourself up. <laughs> is that the new Lyft? Is that the new t-shirt? Yeah. Yeah. Is that That's the new t-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> don't be a Bethany. <laughs> All right, well, before Good we luck. move on. What's her name, Amanda? Amanda. Good luck, mm. Amanda. Yeah, Amanda, let us know. Do what's right for you. You don't deserve that. Kick his ass out. Kind of.
life. No one does. If you're unhappy, get them the fuck out. It's your place. Um, all right, so before we move on to our last question, I want to thank Movement. This holiday shopping season is here. With Movement, you could skip the crowds and standing in crazy lines and find a gift they'll love at prices that beat department stores. Movement watches start at just $95. At department stores, you're looking at over 400 to 500 bucks. They figured out that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup, providing the best possible price. Ooh, is that a Movement watch? Yep. Oh, it is. <laughs> uh, at such great prices, Movement watches make wonderful holiday gifts, too. Classic designs, quality construction, and styled minimalism. Over 1 million watches sold in over 160 countries. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash open. Now is the time to step up your watch game. Go to movement.com slash open. Join the movement. I love movement watches. That's a really nice one. I don't know if I've seen a lot of the guys' watches. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm a guy, so I tend to wear them. Are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. It is just, yeah. Their watches are great. Their sunglasses are great. They do have sunglasses now. Sunglasses. A lot of holiday gifts. Do it. Great, great options. All right, let's do our final question of the show. Another box of issues. Ready for it? All right, this is an anonymous feel, female who's 20 years old. I, ho I was hoping you would say feline. Feline. Just like anonymous rodent. feline. This is meow, 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 meow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> uh, so, anonymous female, 20 years old, writes My ex boyfriend and I have been struggling to come to terms with what we should do. Uh, trying to be friends and cutting out all communication. I have desperately been trying to stay friends. He was my first proper boyfriend and we dated for seven months. He had told me he loved me, but I was never able to say it back. After we broke up, initiated by me, he wanted to stay together, we stopped talking to give some time to get over each other. After three months, we met randomly at a party and he told me he had a girlfriend and I was happy for him. We have met several times after that and things were never awkward. I also have a boyfriend, so I thought we had both moved on. Now he tells me he doesn't want to talk to me anymore and that he still has feelings for me. Should I fight to keep his friendship or should I let him go? Could it maybe just be the fact that we're both each other's first boyfriend slash girlfriend? I also can't fight the fact that his family probably hates me for breaking his heart. Let it go. Yeah, let it go. Let There's it go. No reason. Yeah, There's he, no reason to stay friends. He's upset now because whatever relationship he was in didn't work out and now he's yeah. lonely again and he thinks yeah. she's happy and moved on. And that's a normal feeling. And that's that. fine. She should move on with the life. You don't stay friends with every ex. Yeah, right. I, I think. Um, I haven't talked to my first wife. Well, in you're different years. though because you have stayed friends with your ex. Yeah, I have a lot of different experiences. I, every guy I've dated, I've either stayed friends with or still communicate with on a regular basis. And I think it's it all depends on how the relationship ended and what the the situation you're in. I do think it is unhealthy to maintain contact in a way that you were like when you were dating. Yeah. Because it makes it hard to get over the situation. But I feel like it's hard to draw that line then, which is why for me I've always cut it off completely. Yeah. Because then you can move forward, I can move forward. There's no like in between gray area. It's not like a drunk text or a drunk call. It's like when it's over for me, it's over. Yeah. Well, if that was their first, they were, she was his first well, love. Well, right, and she's still learning. And she was his first love, and he still has feelings for her, and he's telling her he doesn't want to be friends with her, she should listen. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's They'll no never reason. be friends. Yeah. He'll always carry a torch for her. And I think maintaining that communication and that friendship is probably just going to make it har way harder for him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she seems to be okay still maintaining that friendship, but I think for him, even if he's, especially because he's asking for yeah. her to end it. Yeah. Like, he just wants to get over you. He's probably having a really difficult time, and you maintaining that friendship is just making it more difficult. It's hard. Well, and it seems like they must run in, like, a mutual friend of, circle friend, because they keep running into each other. So it's, yeah. like, kind of hard to avoid this person, but also, like... If you see each other at a party, just don't fucking talk to each other. Yeah. It could be hard. I mean, the, the easiest thing you could do after a breakup is just cut off communication completely. But yeah. there are a lot of situations where you can't if yeah. you have the same friend group as this person or if you work with them. Yeah. You have to live together for another three months. <laughs> or if you have to live yeah. together for another three months. Yeah. I've been lucky to not have really any bad breakups. Yeah. Oh, my God. Every bad breakup. But what do you consider, like, bad? bad? I mean, my first wife and I got divorced because we hated each other. Yeah. So, I don't know. It was I don't know. If that was it. Was good that we broke up. Yeah. Mutual, right? So. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think. I Mostly. guess for me, it's like it's never been because like someone cheated on someone or because yeah. there was like a huge blow. And it was just like. Oh, I've had that. This is just time for it to end. Yeah. For whatever reason. God, I think it's just. I guess it's just women. There's so many emotions involved. So every breakup is like the end of the world. We have so many emotions. It's it's so true though. It's so true. Like I don't feel like ever. I don't feel that way. Like not every breakup has been the end of the world. Generally, like, it's been I'm, like I'm the right thing. I'm just saying like dating women in general. Like mm. every breakup that I've had mostly oh. has been this huge event. Yeah. Um, and it's been this huge to-do. And it's like, 
Like, like it's not just one conversation. It's like... Oh God, oh God! I spent two years of a relationship trying to break up. I with remember. <laughs> well, I remember you told me about me it. Me too. No, that and was then my. I sent her to Alaska. My first said. relationship. I dated a, a guy for six years. It was my first ever relationship. Is that the little gingy kid? Yeah, <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> one of the best people I know. Little gingy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great guy, but we dated for six years and probably like three, four years into that relationship, I realized that like, yeah. uh, I don't know if this is for me. Yeah. But you're so invested at that time where it's like, how do I even when you're begin young too. that discussion? Yeah. yeah, and someone like who I thought for the first three, four years of that relationship, this is the person I'm gonna marry. This is the person I wanna spend my entire life with and I'm gonna have children with him and, and everything. And then I grew That's up- too late. Them. It's true. That's true. Give him a Maybe call. for me, Give but <laughs> yeah, well, like everything. We know right. everything's dried up down there. You just sit him down. You just <laughs> sit him down and you say, "Listen, you're lovely, but you have red hair." <laughs> Nothing is wrong with red hair. <laughs> I totally agree. I actually quite like red hair. I do too. I've been thinking about dyeing my hair red. You look good as a ginger. My sister-in-law has beautiful um, red hair. But is it natural? No, it's 100 percent natural. Yeah. See, that's the difference, I think. Yeah. Because then I'm not an actual ginger if I dye it. That's true. <laughs> Hi Jeff, hey. you're here. But yeah, I don't know. Breakups are tough. But if this guy's like, sounds like he's begging for space, then you should grant that to him because there's no reason why you should. Sounds like he's being pretty clear about it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's hard, especially if it was your first relationship. And yeah. he said, I think he said that he loved her, and he, she, didn't she never said it back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's probably really hurt about that. He's probably pretty, pretty fucked up. Yeah. Well, good luck, anonymous female. And the worst thing she can do is be nice and kind and supportive. You're right. She's going to remind them all, yeah. about all the things that he likes about her. Yeah. Yeah. I know that game. It's hard, though. She should sleep with his dad. Yep. On that note, I don't think there's any better advice to end the show on. Uh, if you have a question for us for Always Open, you could email that to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. If you have a shot you want us to do or any feedback of the show, we'd love to hear from you. And... I think that's it. Let us know. We'll sleep with your dad. We there you go. We'll, let we'll send us we a won't. picture of your dad. Well, I'll take a turn. Yeah. Jeff, Why thank not? you for joining us. Bethany Anytime. as well. Yeah. Meryl Love as always. Guys. Barbara, thank you. Well, Lo lovely having you guys 88% of the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, no, yeah. it's like 95 this season. Thanks. She's uh, stepping it up. <laughs> uh, we love you. And if you're a first member, uh, we're going to have a post show that you can watch as well for uh, another segment we're going to do. So make sure you watch that. Or if you're not a first member, sign up so you can check it out. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining me. Hey. I almost missed you.